When lighting for film, theater, and still photography, a cucoloris is, a, is an item that you place in front of a light, and when the light shines through it, it casts a pattern. The shadows are, uh, are cast, and you can give the appearance of being in a location uh, that you're not really in. Say you want to look like, uh, you're, say you're doing a, uh, a little stage production, and you want to make it look like they're not on stage, but they're in a forest. Well, you could put uh, a cucoloris in front of the light and have it look like they're walking in the forest because you could have branches and, and leaves and things like that. Okay. Also, there's so that's a, a cucoloris, and, and you'll hear it referred to as a cookie. Um, but also in 3D, we kind of jumble up the, the word, uh, the, the terms cucoloris and gobo. Uh, a gobo is actually um, an item that goes inside the light like, um, you know, either metal or glass, and it does pretty much the same thing. You've got a pattern, and then when light shines through it, you get um, that effect in your, in your environment, in your scene. And you can do, you can use random patterns, you know, all different types of patterns to use. You see these at um, light shows and things like that, but we can take advantage of a cookie or a gobo or a cucoloris in Lightwave uh, using a spotlight. And so what I thought we could do is take a look at, at doing that. And it's a good way that if you don't want to build a, you know, a giant environment, but you want to give the feel that your items are in an environment, you could always use a cookie or a gobo to, um, to do that. So let's go ahead and hop over to Lightwave. If I do a quick render, Okay, we've just got um, basic lighting here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our setup. Okay, I just have one light here. I'm going to change this area light to a spotlight. Okay, and I'm going to change the projection image. Instead of none, I'm going to load an image. And let's pick, let's go ahead and pick uh, this little uh, fern image and we'll load that up. Now we can go ahead and do a render or if we go into our light view which is five on the keyboard or we can come up here and choose light we can see where the pattern is going to to be projecting. I'm gonna hit P for properties again slide this over and I'm just going to change my cone angle get it a little smaller on there and let's go ahead and do a render. Okay so now uh, the little gecko character is walking in the is walking in the jungle, and we've we've got light uh, shining through. Now it's kind of doing the exact opposite that I would want, uh, because uh, maybe I want this to um, to be where the the light isn't hitting where the the fern is. So I'll just go over to image editor, and uh, go over to editing, and let's invert that image and see what that looks like. Okay. That looks a little more realistic. Now the, the light is uh, shining through and, and hitting the leaves, and the leaves are blocking the light. Okay, So we can always do that. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at another image. There was one that, uh, that I pulled that I really like uh, that wasn't just black and white, um, uh, just high contrast black and white. There's all kind of gray midtones in there, so I'm going to load that up. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Now, I don't have anything else in the scene other than what you're seeing with the gecko, the box, the ball, and the flat plane, but I can give the appearance that um, he's in this, uh, in this environment using the projection image. Now, you can also use color images uh, for your projection image, and that's how you can fake... Uh, you know, if you wanted to have stained glass and make it appear that the stained glass was, um, you know, the light was shining through it and then those colors were being transferred into the scene and onto the characters, well, you can throw uh, color images into the projection image. Now, the projection image is limited to the spotlight, uh, so you're going to want to use a spotlight image to work with um, uh, projection images, uh, cookies or, or gobos. But it's as simple as this. You can come in and um, pl place any image you want. Just so we can see, we can place a, a color image. Okay. 
So if we wanted to have a projector in the scene and we wanted a character or something to pass in front of the screen that the projector was, um, you know, projecting the image on, well, we could just place an image sequence if we wanted uh, and, uh, and have the character walk right in front of it. We used this on a, uh, a project uh, uh, a little over a year ago called Teddy Scares where we needed to have it look like a character was passing in front of a window, but we didn't actually have a window in the scene and we needed to, uh, to do that. So we used an image sequence uh, that was just a silhouette of a character passing in front of a window and then projected that into the room, which was really just two walls. Uh, and it gave the appearance that there was an entire room uh, and we were seeing light come in through the, the window. So again, really easy to set up. You just um, place your image into the projection image. Uh, it's not a bad idea to take advantage of the fact that we can look through the light view and see how we're going to line things up. And uh, don't be afraid to experiment with more than just black and white images. Uh, throw some color images in there, especially if you're working with stained glass. It's a, it's a pretty cool setup. So it's a quick look at working with uh, cookies and gobos in Lightwave.